Hello guys and guys, and welcome back to another tutorial here on Tuesdays. Today I'm going to be showing you guys how to make fancy looking text in After Effects, um, which can be used for all sorts of things. Uh, mainly, I've been starting to use them for my intros, um, 2D intros, um, so I thought I'd go ahead and show you how I made uh, some of the text that I made for, I think, both No Boom and Creeper Farts. I use this technique. Um, it comes out looking pretty good, and I'm really satisfied with how the text looks because it looks very fancy. Um, so anyways, uh, you're going to want to open up Photoshop. I'm using CC, but of course you can use pretty much any version. And uh, I'm just going to go ahead and uh, create a new document here. So I'm going to name it uh, Fancy fancy text. Text. Texts. Okay. Um, I'm going to go ahead and make it pretty wide because text is, you know, fairly wide, I guess you would say. Um, so I'm going to go about 4,000. Always go big, because, you know what, why not? And uh, 500, that seems like it should be pretty wide, wide enough to fit some fancy text. Um, and then you can just go ahead and click OK. So with that all said and done, it's going to go ahead and create our canvas here. And uh, we, can, we can get started. So I'm going to go ahead and select the text tool right here. Go ahead and click. Make my text nice and big. I don't know. Got to type something first. Oh, oh, oh. Click once, not drag. Okay. So I'm going to type in some test text. And I'm going to kind of get it sized right. Okay. So that looks pretty interesting. Um, the font will have to change. I think I used Molot. Yeah, I used Molot um, for a lot of my stuff. So I, I like how Molot looks. It looks, it looks pretty cool. Um, if you guys are interested, you can go ahead and click over here. If you don't have this, I think it should be under Window, and uh, it should be under Character, yeah. So you can go to Window and Character if this isn't here, but uh, go ahead and click on that. I'm going to unitalicize it. I know someone was asking how you italicize font. Well, that would be how. Um, you can also bold. I don't think it looks too good bolded. And then you can um, do small caps. So if I type lowercase, it'll make it all small, capital. You can make it like superscript, subscript, underline, all that fancy stuff, strike through. You get the point. So you can do it all here. It's, it's pretty nice. You can, you know, change some cool stuff. You can make it flat. I don't know. Crazy stuff. I know. Revolutionary. Um, so I'm just, I'm just going to go ahead and tweak it. Tweak it just a little bit. Um, so I'll just get it the right size here. And we can go ahead and start making things look fancy. Um, I might want to actually make it say something here. Hold on. Let's have it say fancy text yo. Alright. Totally legit. Alright. <laughs> Anyways, let's go ahead and select that and uh, we'll make it a nice white. I like to go white. Lighter colors usually work better for this. You can go any sort of color actually. You can just go over here and just cycle through the colors. Want to be green, blue, whatever. Um, but I'm gonna I'm gonna showcase something with the color a little bit later after we add all the fancy um, sort of effects to it. So go ahead and accept that. There um, you can play around with different fonts. Defont.com is usually a good place to get it. Bold text is uh, better for this sort of thing. If you get like uh, fancy cursive looking stuff, it's not gonna come out as great. Anyways. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead, right click on here, go to blending modes, and I'm just going to go ahead and uh, like I said with pretty much all my tutorials, if you want to come out with something unique and cool, um, just play around with stuff. And that's pretty much what I did to find out this technique. Um, by no means follow my instructions or my effects exactly. I mean, just play around with it um, because that's how some of the most amazing things are found in life. So anyways, I'm going to go ahead and add a stroke here. I'm going to select that and click on the thing. Um, if you want to go to it and um, enable it, just don't click the check mark. Click the actual thing. And uh, yeah, just follow that. If you don't get what I mean, it's okay. So I'm going to go ahead and add a nice uh, border to it with the stroke. I'm not going to make it straight black. I'm going to make it a little bit off black. I'm going to make it like light or not light gray, dark, some dark gray, kind of like that. And uh, opacity, yet again, play around with it. Um, I might want to do inside. No, that looks horrible. All right. Center. Eh, that doesn't look half bad, actually. Uh, I'll just do outside. Mm, actually, center looks nice. 
See what I mean, guys? It's it's all about it's all about figuring out outside. I can't make up my mind. Whatever, pick something. Um, and then I like to go to my drop shadow. Drop shadow is something I like to add to pretty much anything I do in Photoshop, no matter what it is. Thumbnails, you name it. Uh, that drop shadow will be there. Um, but anyways, notice how the drop shadow it kind of fades out, but it the edge is so close. Like you don't know when you save this, it's the drop shot is going to get cut off at the edge there it's it's going to get it cut off so what i like to do is i uh, just leave that real quick and then go to my image and then canvas size and then just um you might not have relative checked but if you want to add to your current uh canvas you can click relative and then just uh add some right now i'm worried about the height uh cutting off some of the drop shadow so i'm just going to go ahead and add 500 that should be a good buffer yeah um, and then if you're also concerned about the uh, the edges right here getting cut off then you can I mean it's all about caution so let's just go canvas size and we'll add some width I'll just add one um, so there you go get a nice buffer area just in case you uh, your drop shadow runs into the border anyways uh, let's go back here and uh, play around some more so that looks about right there anyways now is for the signature um, piece of resistance, whatever you want to call it. Um, I like to grab my gradient and I like to push these two together and kind of create that sharp line gradient right here. You can click and drag it and position it wherever you want. I usually go about center. And then what I go ahead and do is lower the opacity until it looks nice and fancy. Um, so I 50 actually works good. You want to make it darker than you actually want it to be. I want it to be like right here, but you're going to make it darker. And for this reason, we're going to go ahead and go to inner glow. And this is why we made it darker. We're going to bump up the size a little bit on the inner glow and uh, we're going to maybe mess with the opacity. But that's why um, the inner glow kind of softens it down. So um, it's not as extreme of a gradient. So now we got that all covered. It looks pretty nice. Um, you can do a few more things. You can actually add like an inner shadow. Gosh, I don't know. Uh, may maybe look at that looks like it's indented or something. Oh, you can actually move it around. I had no idea. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of that. You can add some sort of texture. Gosh, that looks kind of interesting. Um, Bevel and Boss was automatically enabled when we I click texture, so you can mess around with this as well. Maybe get some beveling going. I I I. I don't even know depth whoa see it's all about figuring stuff out anyways I'm just gonna get rid of that right now so anyways there you go you can mess around with the stroke color actually um, I'm gonna make it maybe a little bit darker all right so that's pretty much that um, but what you're gonna want to do now is that if you want to change the color you can still do it so grab your text tool and then click and highlight um, so I want to make each of these a different color to kind of show you guys it carries over. Um, although you may notice that the, the um, what you call it, the inner glow is a little bit too extreme. It's kind of knocking out most of the color. So um, you can go back and change that. Um, it's little things like these that kind of show you um, if you need to change something. So I'm going to go back to that inner glow. And I might actually, can I move that around like the drop shadow? I don't think I can. Um, so I'm just gonna kind of maybe tone down some of the stuff here. Huh. Huh huh. Or I could play with the blending mode actually. Maybe something, something along the lines of, I don't know, just keep clicking down, see what looks good. No, nothing looks good. All right, except for, I don't know. <laughs> kind of messing around with blending modes is one of my, uh, pe it's not a pet peeve, I actually like messing around with blending modes, it's fun. Um, but I think that one looks the best. Yeah, overlay. Overlay seems to be doing the trick. Anyways, I uh, might want to lower the gradient. I mean, I mean, after you add the colors, uh, definitely shows you if stuff needs to be changed, you know. Maybe load the size of the, uh, the glow. And there you go, you're left with some pretty nice looking text. Um, go ahead and change these to other colors. I'm gonna make fancy yellow, because bling bling, you know. Um, 
and then maybe make this green or something. I don't know. Get a nice green. Yeah, fancy text, yo. <laughs> Anyways, that's that. Um, if you've also watched some of my speed shows and some of my intros, uh, you also notice that uh, on on uh, I think no booms, I actually tilted the uh, the text and did some crazy stuff with it. So to do that, basically what you want to do is you want to um, you want to convert this to a smart object. And now what that did is that it basically, if you know what pre pre composing is in After Effects, that's pretty much what that is. If you double click the icon right here, it brings you into that sort of pre comp, if you want to call it that. And uh, there, there is our text layer. It's nested within. And when we make changes to this, like I, I, I take away the stroke and go back here. Well, you don't see it's updated. You have to go back here and actually do um, save. You actually have to go ahead and save this. <clears throat> and then it'll update in this one. So it's kind of like pre-composing and I, I only found out about this like a short little bit ago. And uh, I'm, I'm really liking it. And uh, I'm having a blast using them. But anyways, we're going to want to take all these effects and put them outside of the pre-comp because we want to work just the text. So uh, we're basically going to right click here and we're going to copy that layer style. We're going to disable these for now, so it's just the raw text. And then we're going to paste the layer style on here. We're going to save the changes so it's not double. And uh, there you go. Your stuff, ha your effects have been moved outside. And now you've just got your text right here. And uh, from here, it's just as simple as uh, I'm going to duplicate it, just in case I don't like what I've done. And I have a backup. This is my backup right here. I hit it because I don't want it you know, showing up. But we're gonna want to uh, select this one, and we're gonna we're gonna rotate these text layers or stuff. So to rotate it and transform it, we have to rasterize the type first, and uh, now we can just go crazy with the selection tool, and we can just uh, ooh, that's gonna be a pain. Let me get the lasso tool actually, so I can. Uh, uh, I haven't used the lasso tool in a while. Ooh, all right. So now you can just hit Control T, and you can uh, you can uh, rotate away, and uh, I think you guys get the picture. I'll just do the first, and I'll, I'll just do every other one, just uh, for sake of example here. Uh, ooh, cut it close to the C there. I don't know if I clipped it. I might have clipped it. Uh, just kind of go every other one here, and uh, yeah. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do the E here, because you know why? Why not? Ooh, lasso tool can be tricky. Okay, text. Um, I don't know. This process is kind of up to you, actually. Um, I mean, it doesn't make it too big of a difference, but if you wanna, if you wanna really sell the effect of some weird-looking text, you can uh, go ahead and rotate these. I I'm sure there's others. Oh, I'm sure there's other stuff you can do uh, within this uh, sort of pre-comp. I'm, I'm just going to call it a pre-comp from now on because that's pretty much what it is in my eyes, being an After Effects junkie. Um, but yeah, you can do all sorts of things. You can maybe, heck, draw on it. I don't even know. What is that? I don't know. Um, so I'm just going to save that. Eh, that's just for sake of example, I guess. Um, and oh god, that looks horrible. Um, so you see it updates, I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of that. Um, so now I see it updates and the text is all like jumbled and stuff. Uh, so, I don't know, do what you want with it, but uh, that's pretty much how I make the fancy texts. Uh, you can go ahead and go crazy with the stuff, figure out new stuff. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and bring that down, it's a little bit strong. Another cool thing you can do is actually add um, sort of like depth to it by uh you know let me just show you how to do that you uh you take your uh text layer and you just duplicate it and then on the one on the bottom you actually just take off all the effects except for i think the stroke um yeah something like that and then basically you want to rasterize it and from there what you can do is Pull up levels by hitting Control L on your keyboard, or going up here to Image, 
adjustment and then levels basically making all of it black and uh, hit control T and just drag it down a little bit right there and there you get some nice depth to your text uh, I think it looks kind of cool I don't know um, it's definitely it's definitely up to you but I think that does look mighty cool um, one other thing that I did I think with no booms was that I uh, I added another hold on what was it it was oh that's what it was okay so we're gonna have to uh, pre comp or smart object it yet again we nest that and now we get to start fresh with new blending mode options and so now I can add another um, drop shadow although this won't be a drop shadow it'll be an inner shadow and uh, basically what we're gonna do here is we're gonna fake um, here you'll see what I mean in a second so I'm gonna make that going straight down and you'll start to see it come in from the top there I will make the size all the way up okay um, so I'll basically drag that down and then what we'll do is we'll make this uh, Let's see, we'll go to normal, and then we'll make this. Let's say, gosh, ooh, that looks that that looks kind of cool. Hold on, let me turn that down. Um, let me try changing the blending mode. I'm going for like maybe that could create like a shine shiny look. That uh, that might actually even fake like snow on top of it, you know? Um, going through here. Ooh, yeah, that kind of creates like a nice shining effect on soft light or hard light even hard light kind of ooh. <laughs> uh, and that's what I mean by kind of experiment around um, yeah that does look pretty nice either right there or right here and I'll just bring down the opacity um, yeah so um, definitely like I said a million times before experiment around um, I think I found myself some cool looking effects here and uh, you know you can uh, touch up some of the stuff like down here by uh, moving some of your effects like your uh, like your stroke um, let me just move that so you disable it here save of course and you go back here and you just add your stroke over here instead so I'll add my stroke um, what was it I forgot what we did for the stroke let me just, uh, uh, I'll just undo it for now, but for sake of example, you, you, you get what I mean. Anyways, uh, that does look rather cool, um, so I'd like to thank you all very, very much for watching. If you enjoyed, uh, make sure to smack that like button uh, down below. It lets me know that you found this very useful. Also, make sure to share all your philosophical um, comments down below so I know what you guys are thinking about this tutorial did it help you did it not help you uh, what's up is there something I need to clarify on anything like that and uh, you know share with your friends because odds are if you found it helpful your friend will as well and that'd be awesome if I could help two people in one anyways all that said hopefully you guys enjoyed this tutorial on how to make some fancy looking text in Photoshop and, um, yep, yeah, I'll see you guys later. Thank you so much for watching, and, uh, peace out.